Every year I go to National Math Casket to meet some of the students from our online school, and I get a bunch of t-shirts. And I know the t-shirt getting isn't over until I have my Desert Ridge t-shirt. See, I got five or six of these. Every year I get a new one. New color, new story on the back. So, this one here, this one's for Desert Ridge. And what I have for Desert Ridge is a whole lot of words. Oh, boy. Now, you know what we're going to do here with all these words? We're going to take some of these words, hopefully all these words, we're going to turn it into some math we can work with. Now, this is a lot of words, so I'm going to need more than just math. I'm going to need some pictures, because I think better in pictures than I do in words. So let's try that here. We've got Nina's two dogs, Biter and Nipper. They normally eat an entire bag of dog food kibbles in 10 days. And she's fed them both for seven days when Biter breaks a tooth and stops eating the hard stuff. And it takes Nipper nine more days to chew through the rest of the bag. And we want to figure out what the ratio is of the number of days it would take Biter to go through the whole thing to the number of days it would take Nipper to go through the whole thing. They're each going all alone. It's a lot of words. So I'm going to try to represent all of everything that's going on here. I'm going to represent it with a picture because it's hard for me to keep all those words in my head. So I'm going to draw a big box here. All right, this is... This box here, this is the entire bag of dog food. And this, this thing, Biter and Nipper, can go through the whole thing working together in 10 days. So in seven days, they're going to get through, uh, say it's like this much. So seven days, they get through this all, if they're, if they're together. Now, if Biter hadn't gotten hurt, hadn't hurt his poor little tooth, we know they could get through these, this, this last block here in three days. They could do this three days together. Of course, that's not what happened because poor Biter over there is working on the soft food while Nipper's still working on the hard food here. And we know that Nipper, well, Nipper ordinarily would knock out the rest of this in nine days, right? All by himself, Nipper's going to go through this in, in nine days. So we can break this into three equal blocks. And each one of these blocks Nipper can knock off in three days, right? Because it's going to get all three of them in nine days. So this one's just three days for just Nipper. And I know that if I got the two dogs working together, we're going to get all of these in three days. But Nipper's got this in three days, so Biter must be able to knock off this when Biter's got the tooth back in three days. They can get them all together, and that's three days for Nipper. These other two blocks, that's three days for Biter. So that means Biter can get through this food twice as fast as Nipper. So now we're ready to go back to the question. The ratio of the number of days it would take Biter to eat the whole bag alone to the number of days it would take Nipper to eat the whole bag alone. And we see that Biter goes through this stuff twice as fast as Nipper, so Biter needs half the time. Drew a picture, found the answer. On to the next problem. Uh, you knew it was coming, right? A whole bunch of words. And you know what comes next? Here comes the picture. We've got Eddie and Missy are swimming laps in parallel lanes of a swimming pool. Different constant speeds. So they're each going at a constant speed. They start simultaneously at opposite ends of the pool, they're swimming towards each other. They first pass each other when Eddie has swum 72 feet. They turn around when they get to the opposite ends and they come back and then they meet again when Eddie is 40 feet from over here. So we're going to take all this we're going to organize it in a picture. First, well, there's the lap. And so we're looking for the length of the lap. We're going to call that X. And we're going to say Eddie starts over here. Missy starts over here. And Eddie starts swimming this way. Missy starts coming from the other way. They meet somewhere in between. Say it's right here. They meet. And we're told that this distance is 72. The first time they meet, they meet after Eddie has swum 72. 72 feet. And that means that Missy must have gone x minus 72 because the whole thing's x. They keep on swimming. They keep on swimming. Eddie keeps going. Missy keeps going. They flip. They come back. They come back and they meet again. I'll go ahead and draw that. Once again, Eddie's coming back this way, and they're going to meet again. They're going to meet uh, wherever they meet. Say they meet here. And it tells us that they meet when Eddie's 40 feet from where, from where Missy had started. 
So Missy on her way back must have traveled x minus 40 because we know the whole length here is x. Now we've got a picture. We've got a picture, we've got some variables. We're going to try to turn this into an equation. How are we going to do that? Now we know that each one of them is going at a constant speed. So the ratio of those speeds is always the same. Ratio of the distances they cover in the same amount of time, that has to be the same too. You know, if Eddie's always going half the speed of Missy, the distance he's going to cover is always half the distance of Missy. So let's go ahead and set up those ratios. We know at the start here, Eddie goes 72, Missy goes x minus 72. So we know that this ratio of distances is 72 to x minus 72. Don't think about what happens the second time they meet. Well, the second time they meet, by the time they've done that, Eddie's going all the way out and come back 40. So he's going x plus 40. So this is Eddie's going x plus 40, while Missy's going all the way across x and then going back x minus 40. If we add those together, Missy's going 2x minus 40 in total. And now we have our equation. These ratio of their distances has to be the same in both cases because their speeds are constant. Now we have these ratios. Now we can, we can solve this. We can solve this. It's an equation we know how to handle. We multiply both sides by the denominators here to get rid of the denominators. Multiply by x minus 72. Multiply by 2x minus 40. You probably call this cross multiplying. And we get 72 times 2x minus 40 equals x minus 72 times x plus 40. This is an equation we can handle. So we're just going to multiply this all out. 72 times 2x is 144x. And 72 times minus 40. Now, we could just go ahead and multiply that out, right? 72 times 2 is 144. Double it again, we get 288. Multiply by the 10, we get 2880. But we could also see the 72 times the minus 40, minus 72 times the plus 40. They're going to cancel out. So if you didn't even bother writing that down, I'd forgive you. We'll go ahead and write it down to keep you from getting confused. Then we're going to expand this product. x times x gives us x squared minus 72x plus 40x gives us a minus 32x. Minus 72 times the plus 40. We already know what that one is. Minus 2880. Now we're going to clean this up a little bit. These cancel out. That's nice. We're going to bring this over here, subtract 144x from both sides. We get 0 equals x squared minus 176x. Of course, I can pull out the factor of x. That's x times x minus 176. Now, x obviously isn't 0. That's a pretty silly pull. So x must be 176 feet. Drew the picture, found the answer.